Welcome back to my channel guys. So you wanna know, do anabolic steroids weaken your tendons? Well, in this video, I'll lightly summarize the answer to this question. I'll talk a little bit about the proposed effects of anabolic steroids and also what you can do about it. That is if you're taking steroids. So I've done quite a lot of research on this topic. I'm gonna to link all the studies that I'll paraphrase down in the description below. So I'll start off with something that's very important to understand. Yes, tendons can strengthen and weaken and yes tendons can grow and shrink my point is that it's absolutely possible to structurally change a tendon and it's also been suggested that things like the duration and level of tension placed on the tendon can influence the growth of collagen so in plain english that can translate to the down portion of a lift for example the bench press on the way down it may positively influence the tension if done slowly and controlled with a significant amount of weight now that doesn't mean that it has to be super heavy rather challenging to finish a given set of reps further to this it is proposed that tendon thickness will increase proportionately to muscle thickness, but will most likely occur at a slower rate. So one study showed that changes in muscle size takes three to four weeks, whereas another study showed tendons taking three to four months to actually grow and strengthen. It has also been proposed that tendons can continue to strengthen even years after muscle growth has plateaued. And this is gonna be partially due to the fact that tendons just aren't very well perfused with blood, whereas muscles on the other hand are. Now here's something very important to consider. Considering these things that I've just talked about, it's largely plausible that the vast majority of tendon issues may be simply down to the natural disparity, forward slash difference of growth rate between tendons and muscles. Here are the key points from a review of studies in 2018 that looked at the mechanical, structural, and biological effect of anabolic steroids on tendons. So guys, in this review, the notion that anabolic steroids may cause tendon rupture was commonly reported. And we generally have two hypotheses to explain this. The first hypothesis is that steroids actually have little to no damaging effect on tendons. Rather, muscle growth initially unaccompanied by tendon growth explains tendon rupture. The second hypothesis is that at high doses, steroids will directly damage the structure of a tendon and that they simply make the tendon more vulnerable to damage or rupture. Now here is the disappointing part that this review and others before have concluded, and that is that neither hypothesis can be confirmed or denied. This review also admits that despite all these studies, the mixed results render it unclear whether things like dosage, exercise, stacking. You know, you got, you know, your tests, uh, D-ball, uh, it, it's just basic stuff. Basically mixing your drugs. <laughs> actually is gonna affect tendon strength. Now guys, you may have also heard that anabolic steroids are used to help, that's right, help with recovery post-surgery. For example, shoulder rotator cuff surgery, which naturally poses the question, is this not a bit counterintuitive based on all of the proposed negative effects that anabolic steroids have? Hmm. Now again, there have been studies that support both sides of this argument, but here's an interesting take home. Some actually suggest that taking the anabolic steroids as a healing agent straight away after your injury has occurred as opposed to taking it post-surgery will be a lot more beneficial. Next guys, I wanna talk about a very interesting yet brutal study that was done on rats where they gave one group anabolic steroids for 12 weeks and they gave the other group no steroids for 12 weeks. And what they did was they pushed both groups to Achilles tendon failure and recorded at which stage in time that this occurred. Pretty brutal, right? And this is why the whole subject of steroids and tendons is unclear because we obviously can't do these kind of studies on humans. Or can we? <laughs> so what they found was that the steroid group of rats reached tendon failure at six weeks and the non-steroid group of rats reached tendon failure at 12 weeks. Now you may think that that's pretty conclusive, right? That steroids obviously cause tendon failure, but not necessarily. We could theorize that the steroids merely accelerated the changes that occurred in the non-steroid group. So you see where I'm going here, don't you? The steroids may not actually directly cause tendon failure, as mentioned in hypothesis number one. Rather, they may actually cause tendon failure by accelerating and more importantly, amplifying the changes that would have occurred with training without steroids. Interesting, eh? Now, there was a study done by Kaneyama in 2015 that proved that human anabolic steroid users, when compared to their non-steroid taking bodybuilding counterparts, showed a markedly increased risk of tendon rupture, particularly upper body tendon ruptures. This study, however, unlike the rat one, <laughs> was done using steroid users that had already ruptured the tendon. They weren't overtrained to failure like the poor rats were. So this study actually never proved how or why the tendons of the steroid users were ruptured. So if you're still watching, you may be asking, well, Koo, are you actually gonna tell us how or why tendons may be ruptured as a result of taking anabolic steroids? And the answer is yes, I am. But first, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, 
just help out with the algorithm. <laughs> so here's a review by Sainz et al 2013 that looked at the effect of anabolic androgenic steroids on tendon properties. They concluded that some, but not all authors, reported anabolic steroid induced collagen inflammation dysplasia and fibrosis which is a fancy way of saying that some but not all authors found that anabolic steroids may cause tendon cell abnormalities tendon fiber abnormalities and tendon inflammation it also included the investigations to date have produced inconsistent results and it's still unclear as to how anabolic androgenic steroids actually affect tendons i know the lack of clarity is actually quite frustrating but that unfortunately is the current literature. To me, it seems obvious that anabolic steroids do cause tenderness issues, but not as a result of a direct effect on the tendon. Rather, they cause a disproportionate amount of growth that also happens without steroid use, but it's gonna be more amplified when you're taking steroids thereby increasing the risk of injury. Saying this, however, the evidence is not clear enough for me to definitively make this conclusion. So what can you do about it? Well, the main implication for steroid users is obviously the higher risk of injury to tendons. But how can we control this? Well, for me, the best way to go about this is to train lighter, meaning, for example, to edge away from sets of reps lower than 10 reps. Because the lower the amount of reps you do, the more weight you're gonna have to push, higher risk of injury. But you're still gonna have to train just as hard pushing close to failure on each set. And we do know from the current literature that the weight that you're lifting isn't so much as important as how hard you push in a given set in terms of building muscle. So doing this, we're gonna thereby decrease the maximal load placed on the tendon, which is naturally gonna decrease the risk of injury. Now, do I recommend training lighter all of the time? Absolutely not. I would definitely recommend that you mix it up, but I would edge towards training lighter the majority of the time. We also know from the research that tendons respond very well to the eccentric or muscle lengthening phase. So for example, the down portion of the lift on the bench press and slow things down for tenderness and muscular gains. Now we must also consider recovery and allowing for sufficient recovery. What we definitely know is that anabolic androgenic steroids allow for a much quicker recovery. But if we want to respect our tendon health, we may have to take a step back and slow things down. Now that's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching my video and I'll see you in the next one.